Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Commodity TV here in the new year, our first interview. Happy New Year to all our viewers, of course, and also Happy New Year to Michael Hudson, the CEO of Hen and Metals. Hey, good morning to Australia. How are you? There we are with the first uh, interview for the year, is it? That's yes, fantastic. sir. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Hope you are doing fine and you had a good start in the new year, as I hope also for all our viewers. Yeah. Let's get into the new year with a yeah new series of interviews, lots to talk about, copper, gold, silver, etc. And we want to start now with Hannon Metals, where we talk about copper and silver. So, Michael, Hannon Metals um, had some yeah good news for this in November uh, still again and I think you also had the uh, good news with this uh, today we want to talk in a second about um, yeah but uh, so let's summarize a bit the last quarter for us what was the real important thing for you yeah so uh, we've got uh, two arms in in Peru just to summarize the big picture just to remind your listeners uh, who may have got a bit rusty over Christmas so we have about half our portfolio in a sediment hosted copper project, of which a majority of that is fully funded by JOGMEC, the Japanese government. And then the other half of our land holding is in a copper gold porphyry a few hundred kilometres south uh, called Previsto. Uh, we're a top 10 landholder in Peru, a huge land position, looking for vast new undiscovered projects. So we're in it for the, the big home run here. Um, we're not uh, looking at uh, any sort of, sort of small systems or around historic old mines. We're looking for the big home run in new areas where exploration hasn't traditionally ventured into the sub-Andean zone where there's lots of vegetation, lots of soil cover and, and looking for those blind porphyries and then at, at the sediment hosted copper. So last month or last quarter, I should say, We've been pretty active um, in both projects. Uh, we, we flew a half a million dollar Canadian LIDAR survey. We followed up a lot with soils and trenching in the sediment hosted project that's funded by JOGMEC. And, and really the key aspect is, is that we've been able to nail down the geology. Now we're dealing with what is basically a pancake over a hundred kilometers of this enriched copper horizon. We, we're focusing in an area um, that we call the DIA-1 area. And the DIA-1 area is about eight kilometres by three kilometres, and we've done a lot of detailed work there. We've, we, we've found initially the, the anomalous high-grade copper boulders over that larger area and, and in this smaller DIA-1 area also. Mm -hmm. We've done lots of detailed soils, lots of uh, stream sediment sampling, but now we will be becoming predictive. And that's the last quarter where we were digging beneath the soils where we predicted the mineralized horizon to be. And, and the LIDAR, which is a, a, a laser imaging technique that can see through the vegetation, helped us become predictive, as did the soils. And that's very important because the predictability means continuity at, uh, at various different scales. And, and, and that, that was really important. And the other geological nut we cracked is that we are dealing with what we call a reduced facies horizon so that pancake is very defined it's in a in a set of rocks now that we can map out over these vast areas and it averages it averages one meter at the very that at the, the cutoff grade that we were using at over two percent copper and over an ounce silver over this very large area, over 70 something channels that we've taken. Mm -hmm. Now the Kufa Schiefer, which is one of the world's supersonic copper systems, was refound. It's been mined since uh, the middle, middle ages, but it was refound mm -hmm. in 1957 at 657 meters in a discovery hole. All our results are at surface. And the Kufa Schiefer was something like two meters at a percent and a half copper. So we're within very much that ballpark of that Kufa Schiefer type mineralization at the grade and thickness that it was found. And mm -hmm. uh, we're seeing it over this, this area, which is eight by three kilometers, which is only a few percent of our ground holding. So, so we've really cracked the nut geologically. This area is ready to drill. And, uh, and now that's the other key aspect of what we, we've been doing mm -hmm. is the permitting Jochen. Yeah, maybe with the Kupferschiefer, what does it mean for you in the context? Because uh, maybe to say it for our viewers, uh, importantly, one of the largest mines in the world, KGHM in Poland, is a Kupferschiefer mine, right? So Correct. this is very rich and very yeah great to produce once you are in production, right? 
Well, there's still the largest silver producer on earth today, yep. uh, the, mm -hmm. the Kufashika deposits, and, and one of the larger copper producing mines, and it's been that way for decades. These mm -hmm. sediment hosted copper systems are only behind porphyries in terms of being the, the most prolific style on earth, and, and the two big ones are the Central African or the African copper belt and, and the Kufashika in mm -hmm. Poland, and, and, and looking for high grade, low footprint mines is really the nirvana for for copper because the porphyries are kept becoming lower and lower grade and mm -hmm. we're needing to uh, mine vast <laughs> amounts of rock which become more and more difficult in this changing social world so finding higher grade lower footprint mines that are that are <laughs> sediment hosted mm -hmm. copper really with the the the, the bastion so we um we haven't drilled it yet we're going towards permitting which is the the other key aspect it takes mm -hmm. You know, it takes a year to eighteen months to get drilling permitted in in Peru, and we're, why, we're, why is that so long? It's just the system. You you okay. really you need to do basically an EIA, which is what DIA stands for. DIA Impacto Ambiental is EIA translated, mm -hmm. and and uh, so we've had to go through and do uh, vast environmental studies, and that's soil, water, uh, air, um, noise. And so we've got to go and, and because we've got such a vast area, it's quite a lot of work. Then we've got to go through and do detailed archaeological surveys. So we, mm -hmm. we, we have actually got the certificate, the, the CIRA, which mm -hmm. uh, shows that there's no environmental uh, areas of interest in and around our drill areas. So they won't have any impact, which is, is of course, great for everybody. We don't yeah. impact any anything like that. And then you've got to go and get all your social work done and agreements with the local communities we're, we're coming up to a very key meeting at the end of january which is a public participation meeting where all the stakeholders come together peru has gone through big political changes and there's been a huge amount of changes in the administration so what is a, a burdensome uh, process has become even more challenging but you know we're on top of it we've been there i've been there for 25 years i'm using people i've known for 25 years and mm -hmm. and 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 that's just the 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 way to do business in Peru, and you 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 must work extremely closely with the locals, and, and uh, otherwise mm -hmm. you're frito. <laughs> yeah, fly. frito. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, that's great. Um, yeah, because it was also one thing I wanted to ask you with the Sierra, because it looks to me like that uh, you have done now your homework to be clean and clear to do the permitting, and once you have the permitting, then you can go full throttle, right? Um, Coming to Jogmec, um, because I think there is a reason why Jogmec went into that joint venture with you, because uh, there is a big, yeah, let's say a large possibility, a large chance to really find the next uh, big copper project here, which is, uh, yeah, might be possible then to bring into a large production scenario, right? Because this world needs a lot of copper in the future. No, I, I mean, we can go and talk at ad finitum about copper. We're going to mine and consume more copper in the next 20 years than we have for the history of Earth. The top 10 gold mines this year were the same top 10 gold mines a decade ago in order, and they're all producing on average about 30% less. So we're not making the new discoveries. Mm -hmm. The big deposits are reducing their output, even though they're mining more tonnes because their grade mm -hmm. is dropping. So finding high grades from surface over vast areas is the nirvana in the exploration world for all of us to try and achieve. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and, and the Japanese government see an opportunity here and, and that's why they're fully funding this project for us with 8 million US dollars over a four year period. We're nearly getting to the end of the halfway point actually, uh, mm -hmm. nearly two years in. And, um, and then they've got a $35 million to spend to take it to full feasibility to earn 75%. So, so Hannon shareholders have, have a, a very good free carry ride in, in this project. Um, today we own a hundred percent, but if Jogmec at the end of four years spend that 8 million US dollars, then they get the 51%. So it's uh, been de-risked uh, and no, no cost um, to, to our equity holders. Mm -hmm, super. So what is the work plan for this year now with Jogmec together? Yeah, so uh, uh, we're going to go and go into the DIA two area. So we're going to go and establish a, a second area to drill. Uh, we're going through the final phases of permitting in the DIA one area, and that mm -hmm. should be ready to drill by the end of the second quarter this year. We anticipate that will be the dry season there in Peru. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe going in early into the third quarter, but it's uh, 
it's going to be um, be drilled and and you know we're not looking for 657 meter depth discoveries um, mm-hmm. like the Kufa Shifa was made at. We're looking at surface discoveries that extend under kilometers and kilometers and kilometers. You know, it's a it's a big big system. So if if this holds up, it's a it's a real game changer, and that's what everybody wants to see getting to the drilling. The the challenge uh, the the soils de-risked it, the channels de-risked it. And now it's the next stage. And and so there's going to be, you know, a, a 10 to 12 uh, geologists on the ground pretty consistently producing lots and lots of results. Um, and so uh, we've, we've, we're going to in re- interpret and continuing to interpret that LIDAR, which, um, you know, has, has been a huge help and collecting a hell of a lot more soils. We've got the recipe to work there now, basically. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, um, first area which is a vast area um but uh we'll 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 transition into the second area as uh, as the year progresses mm-hmm. super so lots to come lots of uh, news flow i would say that is fantastic as you are anyhow you are one of the top 10 landholders in peru now and uh, let's switch to another uh property previsto so what's going there i saw in your presentation you have like a first mover advantage which is really interesting and uh, so what is what is the game plan there what is going on there what is previous though it's a few hundred kilometers south two to three hundred kilometers south we've got a huge area over 1300 square kilometers in our own right 100 percent hannon in this case we've defined a new belt of porphyry mineralization that was previously unidentified. Um, we've gone and dated those rocks, and, and it's really important to understand the age of porphyry mineralization. And 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 we've dated all these rocks of Miocene age, which are the, the age of the big deposits, the big porphyries and the epithermals in Peru. That's one of the key ages you want to be in. So it uh, it de-risks it at that stage. We've run stream sediment samples over the whole area so we know the anomalous catchments we've staked the key uh, parts of the corazon <laughs> to talk a bit more spanish uh, the, the 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 heart of the system and we've got a huge land holding and it's a it's a we've got seven or eight um mineralized porphyries that we've identified we've started to see free gold uh some of the locals are are working free gold in the area that we had no idea there um and and now for the first time we've started to get those permits going from application after a year to it takes generally in peru we've got a large proportion that are now granted mining concessions which allows us to go and deal directly with the locals go and plan detailed surveys soil surveys uh, more detailed mapping and this this will be the first look at the system um, in detail outside those broader surveys and and we'll start to get you know the the heart of the system these systems identified we're doing the pre-planning work we also announced for a very large um, aeromagnetic survey which is the really the key to these systems these systems the porphyries um, and that our copper gold bearing are magnetic and so we'll fly these areas and and that will really de-risk it so by middle of the year we'll have lots of soils we'll have the aeromag and we'll really be able to define the system in detail and and again these copper gold porphyries are rare and it's really where the major gold companies have to go to find their gold production let alone the copper that they contain they are majority copper but the the gold byproduct is huge and you you've seen a lot of the major gold companies the newmonts and the barracks go into these copper gold systems so you're getting two bites of the cherry one completely de-risked in the sediment hosted system we do have a a large part of the set well about a third of the sediment hosted system in our own right that we didn't talk about outside the john jb and then and then the copper gold porphyry so this is big frontier exploration and uh you can see i'm pretty enthused about it and and really covid set us back a year too we didn't get in in 2020 and uh so what i was hoping for last year will be 2022 mm-hmm. okay super so, but as, as you said previsto is 100 percent hannon so could you imagine when it comes to a certain point of um uh, survey and you see great results that you also maybe do a joint venture because I think it's still also a big a portion of land, right? Yeah, there's no there's no shortage of opportunities. I mean, mm-hmm. the 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 major's job is to keep their eye out, and 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 I know I can tell you they're keeping their eye out on this project. Um, it, it's also got geological 
the the best in the business interested because um, because that Miocene age is really a critical um, part of the geological understanding of the tectonic history of the Andes, let alone that it's a, an economic opportunity. So uh, it it it's certainly being watched. Uh, we we're always up for doing deals because we're in that business, but it would have to be a pretty interesting deal for us to joint venture away another project um, at this early stage when there's so much for us to do so yeah. so yes he is always open of course we, we never know which where, which way it could go but um, and we know it's getting interest so and, and at some point yeah a- absolutely but uh, but this is this is early days where we can really make an impact in Super. So it looks like a super busy year in front of you. And uh, yeah, please keep us posted and uh, we hope for some very, very good results. So do we, Jochen. Uh, we'll, we'll stay in touch. Super. Thank you very much, Michael. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, that was Michael Hudson, the CEO of Hannon Metals. You heard it. Lots going on with the joint venture with uh, Jockmec, you know, the large uh, Japanese state company um, on uh, Tabalosa San Martin, but also a lot going on now and really starting at Previsto. And Previsto is 100% owned and they have the first move advantage because they are the first ones who really touch ground there and all looks very promising and one thing is for sure this world needs a lot of copper not only in five or ten years they need it from now on so Helen metals is on the right path here with the right partner and i would suggest you really have a close look onto this still undervalued company thanks for watching us and bye-bye from switzerland